everyone. I'd like to talk about stretching today. So a lot of us come to yoga with the mindset of, oh, it feels really good to stretch. And it really does feel good to stretch. However, if we're not doing our stretching in a mindful way, sometimes that stretching can actually go against what our actual goals are in our yoga practice. For example, if we do a stretch and we move into it too quickly, what happens is the body um, moves into what's called the stretch reflex. And stretch reflex sounds like that might be a good thing. However, the stretch reflex is really there to protect us. So for example, if we were to fall and we accidentally overextended ourselves, the stretch reflex would kick in, would send a signal right to our spinal column, to our nervous system, and tighten those muscles up as a means of protecting us from really furthering that injury. So in our yoga practice, if we move too quickly into a stretch, um, without that kind of mindful quality, and say we push ourselves, strain ourselves to get into that you know beautiful pose that we want to achieve sometimes we're doing more harm than good because while it might feel nice to stretch that muscle while we're doing it afterwards that tissue is perceiving that there's danger that there's a threat that maybe we've overextended ourselves and those tissues are going to tighten up and so I want to teach you how to avoid um, really activating that stretch reflex so that we can really get a good lengthening of our tissues without that kind of pushback, that contracting of the tissues, that tightness and soreness that we might feel after our practice, which we think, oh, I know I worked, I did that stretch and now I'm sore. But really we want to try and come into that stretch with a slower, more mindful approach so that the tissues feel really safe. So we wanna create that feeling of safety in our bodies. And then it's really the connective tissue, the fascia um, that we're really targeting when we're going into a very slow, progressive stretch where we're meeting ourselves each step of the way and then making that decision. Is it safe for me to go a little farther at this point? And so we're gonna explore that in our practice today um, as we do some long held stretches in more of a yin style practice today. So we're gonna start on our backs in a moment. We're gonna be targeting a lot of kind of outer hips, inner legs. If you're doing these um, practices with me in real time, we're getting really close to the springtime. And in the yin yoga tradition, we, are, we have some, let's say, things in common with Chinese medicine in that we involve the meridian system. And so each season is associated with a particular pair of organs in our body that follow a particular pathway of energy through the body. And so the pathway that we're working on today is the liver and the gallbladder. So liver and gallbladder channels, a lot of inner leg stuff is the liver channel and then a lot of outer leg, outer hip, side body is the gallbladder channel. So we'll be targeting both of those today. And I'll talk to you a little bit about each of those um, meridian pairs as we go through the practice. So we're gonna start on our backs and all you're gonna need for today is maybe a blanket down over your mat that'll be nice and comforting because we're mostly gonna be on the ground, um, either on our backs or seated. A pillow to sit on. And then you might wanna have a pair of yoga blocks nearby in case you wish to modify anything. Um, those could be helpful or like some rolled up yoga blankets. I'm going to grab one of those just in case I want to show something to you. So, you know, a yoga blanket, we can always roll up and use that as like a support under our legs when we do particular poses. So I'll show you that when we get to it. If you have two of those, that might be even more helpful. So um, grab those things if you need them and then I'm going to meet you on your back. So take a couple moments to get settled there on your back. I'm just gonna grab my second blanket. And perhaps having that pillow under your head, we're gonna start with the feet flat. And just let your 
spine rests on the ground for a moment. And just take a few cycles of breath. So here in this position, we're not really feeling like a stretch. Our body is pretty neutral. But notice particular sensations that might be coming up for you as you start this practice for you today. Starting to allow a nice belly breath. So it's a nice diaphragmatic breathing where our diaphragm moves down, the belly rises. And then as we exhale, the abdomen softens. And we feel the back ribs drop into the ground. So in order to come into a safe stretching practice, we'll have to set the tone for ourselves. So if you are like me, uh, maybe a little bit type A, we like to get a lot of things done, we like to push ourselves, um, that's the kind of thing we want to get away from when we're talking about a safe stretching practice. So setting the tone might mean, can we slow ourselves down? Can we let go of our to-do list and our agenda for this next hour or so? And allow ourselves to accomplish nothing more than being present with ourselves, with our body, with our breath. And perhaps setting the intention to move slowly, to move mindfully, and to respect the needs of our body. Meaning we're not going to push ourselves past what we feel is safe. And I'll be giving you some thoughts on how we can discern that as we come into different poses. Let's take last three breaths here. So this initial time is really important just to set that tone of our practice. We can really jump right into it. Our body, our minds are not quite ready to settle into that quiet stillness. All right, go ahead, take your arms and let them come out to a T. And then we're gonna take our right ankle and cross it over your left knee and we're coming into a figure four shape. And just kind of noticing there how that feels, what any sensations are. This might be pretty mild, but we're just gonna check in. And then if it feels like we might want to go a little farther, we can go ahead and pick up that left foot and draw the knees in towards your chest. Now I'm trying not to lift my lower back off the ground. I'm keeping the lower back down. And then I'm going to thread my hands through and hold behind the back of the left thigh. Now in order to keep this nice and like yin-like, I don't want to be like striving, reaching, efforting, so if it's hard for you to hold your leg, grab a yoga strap and put that around your leg. You can have a belt or scarf to extend your arms so that your shoulders can stay relaxed and they're not lifting up, but you don't feel like you're in a crunch. So we want the spine more neutral here, respecting those natural curves of the spine. And now we're going to hold it for a few cycles of breath. Now this foot here, we might let it kind of be more parallel or we can even let it drop down. And then that lets it be more passive, a little more on the yin side of things. So a yin practice is about letting go of all of our doing, all of our efforting, all of our achieving, and simply coming into a place of being. So now as you hold here, find a nice, soft, slow breath. Breathing in and out through the belly. Just allowing there to be a rise and fall of the breath. And with every exhale, you have a sense of softening Relaxing through the shoulders, relaxing through your face. All right, we're going to let go of the hands and let that foot come down to the ground again. Take your arms back out to a T. And 
And then from here, my right foot, I'm gonna bring it over to the left, and then coming into a twist. And I'm gonna let that right foot come to the ground if I can. So my right hip has now lifted off the ground, and I'm in a twist. I'd like you to see if you could adjust your shoulder blades so that you feel like your chest is pretty much facing up toward the ceiling. If your right shoulder is not on the ground, let your arm drape over your body, but still let that shoulder drop. If it would feel okay, let the arm stay out to a T. And then either have your gaze straight up toward the ceiling or look over towards your right shoulder. But don't go too far into that neck. We don't want to uh, cut off blood flow. So maybe just a slight turn of the head. And now slow, soft breath into the belly. These first initial poses are maybe not quite so intense. We're going to get to some other stretches where we're going to really be able to notice if we're activating that stress uh, re reflex. And let's just take a couple more moments here. Just dropping in. And starting to favor a nice long exhalation. So you hear me talk about that a lot. Long exhalations help us shift our nervous system to be more calm. Um, be more on the parasympathetic nervous system side of things. And that can help our tissues start to relax a little bit more. You know, in our busy lives, they tend to tighten up and clench up. And we want to allow the feeling of safety so those tissues can relax. Let's take three more breaths right here. That breath come into the low belly, maybe even your lower back. Exhale, nice, slow, soft exhalation. All right, so take an inhale, and as you exhale, we're going to bring the top leg back first, moving slowly, and then the bottom leg. And then we'll even ourselves out and pause in that center for a moment. Let's try the other side. Cross your left ankle over your right knee, pausing there, arms out to a T. Again, feel and sense any sensations here through your knee, through your outer hip. Sometimes this is enough and we don't need to do this. Right? If we're already getting kind of a nice sensation through here, um, maybe we don't need to go to that next phase. If you feel like this is pretty mild, you don't feel too much, you can go ahead and pick that right foot up, draw the knees into your chest, and then reach through holding behind the back of your right thigh and clasp your hands. And then you can let that shin relax or keep it up parallel. I like to let it relax when I'm in a yin practice. And now, making sure that we're letting that back body drop toward the ground. I want to feel like I'm doing a crunch here. So try not to lift through your tailbone. Let the tailbone be heavy. Nice, smooth, even breathing. Rise and fall of the diaphragm and the belly. There be long, soft exhalations. Many of us, our exhalation muscles are weaker than our inhale muscles, and we favor our inhales. And that can lead us to feel more like the type A personality. You might feel more anxious, you might feel more amped up, because our, our inhale is a little bit longer than our exhale. So see if you can re reverse that and let the exhales be longer than your inhales. Okay, go ahead and release the foot
foot down, take the arms back out to a T, and now we're gonna take that twist. So shift the hips a little bit and let that foot drop over. Left foot comes over to the right side. And then this hip starts to lift off the ground. If this shoulder is floating, I can get this shoulder down. It might be a floating arm. That's not so good for a rotator cuff. So you can place your hand here on your abdomen or extend it out if the arm is relaxed. And then let's just stay here, finding that nice, smooth, even breath. Favoring a lingering, soft exhale. And you let your face feel smooth and relaxed, especially the area around your eyes. So we're talking about liver, gallbladder today. These meridians also relate to our vision. So let your eyes be closed or let the eyes be soft. And relax all of the little muscles around your eyes. With every exhale, let your body land here in the present moment on the ground. and take one more breath. And then when you're ready, we'll slowly, slowly start to come back and release that foot down. Just as we're going into a pose nice and slowly and mindfully, I'm asking you to also come out of a pose slowly and mindfully. So we keep that really relaxed tone to our practice today. Go ahead and bring your knees into your chest. Go ahead and give them a little hug, a little squeeze. And then we're gonna take the knees apart and reach down and hold on to your ankles or your shins. And coming into kind of an air bound angle pose. I'm gonna let the arms drop, let the legs drop, let the sacrum drop, your back ribs drop into the ground. So we feel like we're really releasing. And as you hold here, find your nice belly breath. So if we are out of balance in our area of our liver gallbladder, relates to kind of feelings of stuckness. Liver gallbladder is dominated by the wood element. So we have different elements that go in each of the meridian pairs. For example, our kidney bladder is the water element and liver gallbladder is the wood element. The wood element is characterized by having a vision for where we wanna go in life and being able to follow through it's a very kind of push through kind of energy. So if we think of the energy of spring, there are plants in the ground and they've got to push through the earth to get out of the ground and come to their full expression as a plant. And we as human beings have those same tendencies. We have a vision for where we want our lives to go, but we need that kind of push through energy, right? And if our liver gallbladder is imbalanced, we might feel stuckness. Like we just can't get this idea off the ground. We can't follow through. And we maybe feel a little sluggish, a little stagnant. We call that stagnant liver chi. Let's take one more breath here. So I'll tell you these little bits of information as we hold the poses of hopefully distracts you that you won't feel um, all the fatigue that you might notice as you're holding the pose. All right, go ahead and bring those knees back into the chest and we're gonna roll over to the side and press ourselves up. We'll come into a seated posture. So you can go ahead and grab something to sit on and 
Maybe like a, a pillow or a folded blanket. And we're going to come into now a seated back ankle pose. So in yin yoga, we call it butterfly. And the butterfly in yin yoga is a long-legged butterfly. So instead of being all the way up here, this feels a little more yang, a little more activating, a little more type A. Let's be like a really chill butterfly. Let the feet slide out. It feels a little more spacious. I also like to take my sit bones apart and even slightly back. And that'll help me as I start to fold forward. Now, some of us feel a little strain here in the knees. So if you have yoga blocks or pillows from your living room cushion, you could stick those underneath your knees. I'm gonna show that as a little bit of support. And when we have support, that can also maybe keep us feeling safer so we don't activate that stretch reflex. So if I go like, drop into this pose, pull myself in, go as deep as I can, right off the bat, that stretch reflex kicks in, sends that signal to my nervous system in my spine, and contracts the tissue, and I might not be able to go any farther. However, if I approach this really slowly and mindfully, and go bit by bit into the pose, as my body invites me to go deeper, it's going to avoid that stretch reflex. It's going to be go more to, toward my brain, and it's going to be able to help me make more of a change in relaxing those tissues. So let's go ahead and try sitting up tall, and now very slowly start to fold forward. And we're doing that really passively. I'm not pulling, I'm not yanking, I'm just softening sliding to where I feel the first edge. Now my first edge is going to be very different from your first edge, and from your friend's first edge. Everybody's different. So if I get to here and my body says stop, I feel a stretch, I'm going to pause there. Now for me, I'm not feeling too much, so I go a little bit farther. And that's about my first edge. So find that first edge and pause there. Come to your nice soft breath. Come to nice long exhalation. Let your head start to get heavier. As you breathe in and out through your nose, notice if your body begins to soften. And notice if it feels safe to perhaps go a little bit farther and find your next edge in the pose. And then you might stay there for a few breaths and then you might be able to continue. So we're gonna stay for a few more minutes. I'm gonna grab a timer, I forgot to pull that close to me. We're gonna stay for about three more minutes. And I know that seems like a long time. We have to remember time is relative. If we were three minutes on vacation at the beach, three minutes would be like nothing. But in a long held yoga posture, it can seem like a long time. So be with it. Even be with the discomfort. Soften into the discomfort. You might be feeling this through your hips, through your legs. You might be feeling it in the thoracal lumbar fascia, thick fascia that connects um, into our lower back. I tend to feel it there. So it's gonna be different for each person. As you continue to soften, you might even let your palms turn up in a really like gesture of surrendering. Breathe deeply into the belly and lower back. Stay with it. We've got about one minute down. So instead of going quickly and 
activating our muscles when we are going into a stretch. We're trying to soften, relax the nervous system, and stretch more of the connective tissue, which is like very gel-like in our body. It's woven throughout our entire body and responsible for making us feel stiff or tight when it becomes a little more kind of congealed or crystallized. And we want to have a sense of it liquefying. So it's not so sticky. It's more of a slippery, soft, mobile sensation. You've got about one more minute to go. Keep breathing, keep softening. So if you start to feel kind of burning, pinching, stabbing, you've gone way too far, back out. Or even if it's tingling and falling asleep, come out a little bit and let yourself stay at that place where we're getting just a mild sensation. If we're getting a super, super deep sensation chances are we're activating that stretch reflex. So we're stretching in a slow fashion to just transform that connective tissue into being responsive rather than reacting. Now we're coming out in a moment, but I want you to remember we're exiting a pose just as slowly as we enter. So incrementally, Start to bring yourself up, stacking your vertebra, keeping your head heavy, even using your hands to walk your hands up your legs. And then we pause when we get to the top. Our tissues are very fragile after we've been in that um, longer held position. So we wanna give them a chance to rebound and come back to neutral. So let's hold there another breath in that vertical shape. All right, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and cross the legs and we're gonna do a pose with the legs crossed this way and then we'll reverse the crossing. So take notice to which leg is in front. My right leg is in front. Again, I want to make sure I'm widening out those sit bones, so help me feel more grounded. If your knees are higher up here, pull in your props and put them for some support. And again, that support helps you feel safer in your body. Safety means we're not necessarily going to activate that stretch reflex. And then we're going to come into a side bend toward the leg that's in the front. So from here, we're gonna inhale, reach the arms up. And as you exhale, so I'm going to my right, so it'll look like I'm going opposite. I'm gonna walk my right hand out. And then let my left arm drape over the ear. So it's a little softer, a little more passive. I could reach and get it more activating, but this is a yin practice. So let that arm drape. And if it's available to you, let your elbow drop to the ground. Now, when I do that, this sensation is increasing. So I might want to go somewhere in between, in which case I'm going to use a yoga block. You could also use a, a blanket or a pillow underneath your arm, fold it in half, make it as high as you need to, because now I'm not getting that stretch reflex. It's a milder sensation. And I'm going to let that arm again drape over. And now I'm going to hold it here. We're going to go for that three minute hold again. So I'm going to start my timer. If it feels appropriate, let your eyes close. Have a sensation of your opposite hip being heavy toward the ground. Breathing through the side body. So side body is gallbladder channel. If our gallbladder channel is imbalanced, again, we have stuckness, and we might not be able to make a decision. So if we have important decisions coming
coming up when we find ourselves wavering, we can't quite commit to that decision, we don't have that energy of the push through the ground that is needed to make that decision. Now I'm noticing that I am able to now go a little farther. So I'm gonna slide the block out and come down a little bit lower. And that might not become available to you. Don't worry if it doesn't. You can stay even up high with your arms straight. And we've got maybe about another minute or so to go here. So gallbladder is attached to the liver, the little ligament. They work together. The liver helps us detoxify our bodies. It also stores blood. And again, it can get stagnant, it can get stuck. It's stagnant liver chi. Maybe we're not detoxifying quite as much as we should. I'm feeling my body here really want to drop now. But I do feel a little strain in through my neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out and I'm going to put my head on my fist, and that'll take the strain right out of my neck. About 30 more seconds here, breathing into that side body. And our gallbladder helps with our digestion, it creates bile that ends up being used by our liver to help process the fatty things that we might take into our body. So it helps us process fats. The liver also stores some of our vitamins. So like our vitamin A, our vitamin D stored in the liver. We want to keep our liver energy healthy so it can do its good work of helping us detoxify. We live in a very toxic world. We're going to come out now in a moment. So first release that top arm down. Engage your belly just enough that we can slowly rise up. Remember that tissue is going to be really tender and then you'll pause in the center. Have a couple of breaths there. So yin yoga is like a meditation. Every pose helps us really drop into the present moment, calm our nervous system. We don't want to move too quickly. Let's take your prop, if you used it, to the other side. And we're going to switch our legs out. So left leg in the front. Make sure, again, adjust your sit bones if they started to come towards each other. I'm going to start the timer in a moment. Inhale, float the arms up. And then as you exhale, come into your side bend. You can have your hand up on, on the floor or on the block. Or you can let that forearm drop down if it's already ready and available. And then let the arm drape over your ear. So letting it be very passive, yin-like. This hip is heavy toward the ground. I'm getting sensation all through the side, a little bit into my back. Coming into that nice, slow, smooth breath. Sure, you have weight in your sit bones. You're not pitching forward here. And just continue to stay with it. So if our liver energy is stagnant, another thing that we can think about is how much do we suppress our emotions? So our emotions are energy in motion. And they want to be expressed, but in a healthy way. So if we're repressing those emotions, they may come out in inappropriate ways. Right? We may have anger, rage, frustration that's misdirected if we have stagnant liver chi. So learning how to express ourselves in an 
appropriate way and not suppress what we're feeling can help us move that energy in our liver. So it's like detoxifying our emotions, right? So we all that toxic emotion, the anger and rage, and we're suppressing, suppressing it, holding it in. Can you imagine you know, what that effect is on our mind, body, and spirit? Now here comes that next strain. It happens to me about halfway through this pose. So I'm gonna go ahead and rest my head on my fist so that I'm not straining my neck here. And then I can let that arm drape over again. And you might have dropped down to the ground. You might bring the forearm to the ground if you don't need to rest your head. And we've got a couple more breaths here. Again, making sure you have it pitched forward. You might even close your eyes in these poses and let your eyes rest, let your senses rest. Sometimes if we take in too much at one time, whether it's food that's toxic for us, toxins in our environment, toxins in the things that we watch, if we take it in all too quickly, it's hard to process it. Close our eyes and go within. Gives our bodies a chance to process what needs to be processed. Okay, we're gonna to start to come out. So let the arm float back down. Tone the belly just enough that you can press yourself up. You might even use your hand. Press yourself up. Be mindful of that tissue here on that right side. And then pause in the center. Tissues adapt back to neutral. After that third breath, we're going to come into a twist. So the twist is going to be a little less yin like than some of the other poses because we can't quite like really drop into it, but it's a good thing to do for our gallbladder and our liver. So I'm gonna give you a couple options. I'm gonna take your right foot, so I'll mirror you for this one. Tuck it behind your left. Stage one, we're just gonna place that foot in front of the shin and we would twist from there. Stage two, we're gonna bring the foot across to the outside of the right thigh. Now this is gonna depend on your flexibility, the leg length, the length of your leg bones here. So go ahead and just hug the shin, sit up tall, and then we'll come into the twist. So we're gonna bring that left hand back behind you, turn towards your left side, and you can either hold on to the shin as a little leverage, can drape your arm past your leg. I wouldn't recommend this one for the yin practice. Let's be a little more relaxed. So let that arm drape or maybe just hold on to the leg. And then turn and I'm getting a nice sensation here on this left side of the body. A little activation into the organ. So when we go on to the right side, you'll be targeting into the tissue around the liver a bit more. Liver is on the right side. So for me, I'm mirroring you, so this is my right side, but you're probably on your left side. Let's hold it here. This will be a shorter hold, so it's a little more active. But do relax through your face, your jaw, your eyes might be closed. Imbalance 
liver um, meridian is a lot of pain in the body. So I study with my friend who's an herbalist, and some of you have been in class with us. And she talks a lot to Chinese medicinal herbalists about pain being related to stuckness in our liver. So good to get out for walks in nature. Nature is really good for our liver chi and getting some good sunlight. Getting some natural uh, vitamin D into us. The liver stores that vitamin D. Let's go ahead and release back to the center. And we're either going to stay here and cross those legs so that the knees stack up. This is called shoelace. Regular yoga we call omkasana, but in yin it's called shoelace, like a tie shoelace. If that's too much for you, you could take your bottom leg and stretch it out. You could also put this foot here. So you have some options, guys. So leg out to the side is kind of the most gentle. You can stick a prop under it. Leg crossed over, next phase. Foot tucked back final phase. And we can stay right here, tend to get a nice stretch in through the outer hips, gallbladder channel, and we might go ahead and fold forward. So you bring your hands out in front of you. Again, watch for that stretch reflex. Is it an intense stretch? You're going to stay right here. If it's feeling pretty mild, find your first edge. Once that edge subsides and the sensation is not so intense, you could start to progress yourself forward. And just pausing here. I'm gonna take about maybe a minute, minute and a half now in this one. It's a little more intense. to a soft, slow breath. The more relaxed you are in your breathing, in your movements, the more the body's going to let go in that deeper connected tissue. And you might find that you can come a little deeper into the pose. If you force it, you're not going to be able to go as far. And you're going to tighten the tissues instead of relax the tissues. Breathe through your back body. And sense that you can breathe into both sides of your back ribs evenly.
time if you do this, it regenerates itself. So even if we would cut away most of our liver, there's a little piece left, it can regenerate itself. So pretty amazing. too far and don't even effort here. We're holding the twist without kind of yanking ourselves or forcing. Just creating an energetic twist. It you know, brings that um, fluidity into the spine. We're turning the tissues along the spine like a wash rag. And really good for the fascia of the spine. All right, slowly return to center. Again, you could stack your legs on top of each other, going for the shoelace. Or you can take your bottom leg out straight or bring the foot out to the side. And in all of these poses, you could fold forward, okay? So coming back through, shoelace, half shoelace, full shoelace, even out those sit bones. And decide, all right, is this already a lot of sensation? Maybe I'm going to stay here and just chill in the upright position. Particularly this lower leg, the outer hip, is where I'm getting a lot of my sensation. If it's not too much, find your next edge by coming forward. And as you come forward, don't go too far. To activate that stretch reflex. Safe stretching requires that we go slowly, we proceed with caution, we stop at that first edge. And as you feel that your body releases, you might be able to walk it out a little bit farther. might help you release a little more. The exhales help us let go. In slow motion, starting to walk yourself up. So yin yoga works not only through stretch, but also compression. So as I folded forward, I was getting a lot of compression onto the tissues as well. Leaning back, unwind. And those places of compression is like a little acupressure into your body. And when we come out of the pose, it's allowing that energy to now flow through those areas that were once compressed. Okay. Next pose is called Dragonfly. In yin yoga tradition, it's called Dragonfly. We're gonna take the legs out wide, and I'm going to encourage you to put a blanket or something under each knee. So if you found two blankets, you could also use two, uh, two pillows would work. The blocks work, not quite as comfortable. I'd like to have most of the blanket behind me rather than in front of me. Some of you might not even need that blanket there, but I'm showing the modifications today as we're talking about safer stretching. And so when the legs don't have this slight bend, um, it tends to pull our sit bones under us. We tend to round our spines and it doesn't feel so good to come into a forward fold. If I allow a little slack here in the hamstrings by bending my knees and kind of pull the sit bones back and apart because if they're tucked under, I'm not going to be able to fold forward. So as I let those sit bones kind of come a little behind me, it'll help me facilitate a safer forward bend. This might be your edge. If your hamstrings are pretty tight, staying upright is a really nice place to be. And just be kind of accepting into what is in this moment. 
If you feel like this is pretty mild, we'll start to come forward. So liver meridian is going through our legs, inner legs, and so we're targeting that in these um, hip positions, wide leg position. Find that first edge and pause there. Try not to go too far. It's very tempting to go into the deepest stretch. But again, that stress reflex is not gonna serve us in the long run. So mindfully, incrementally, starting to walk yourself forward as that edge recedes. So I call it red light, yellow light, green light. So green light, we pretty much feel nothing. Yellow light is where we want to hang out, where we're feeling some sensations, but we're not in that red light where we're feeling an intensity, stabbing, burning, pinching, tingling. We want to back out, so we're back to safety, proceed with caution. Now this is a pretty nice pose for me, so I could easily kind of keep going, but just notice where your edges are and stay where it feels appropriate Breathe into it. At some point, you might even let your head go. Just let yourself soften even more. Maintain a smooth, even breath. And we're going to stay here for about a minute or so. <coughs> Let your body drop into the ground and soften. Let yourself melt into the ground a little more. Letting 
up. Breathe into your belly. I forgot to mention, if you can't be in child's pose for any reason, your knees bother you, slide onto your belly. And just be on your belly with the same option. Stack your hands up, rest your forehead. And we call that crocodile versus a child's pose. So that's a nice option if you have knee pain in a child's pose. So go ahead and slide yourself out. Let's take about five more breaths wherever you are.
come onto our backs, back to where we started. Bring the top foot down, bend both knees, and even yourself out. Now, option if you just want to kind of stay here, or you can come up and grab your blankets and put one under your knees and have the other one to cover with. But before we cover, let's just go ahead and bring the knees into the chest. Have a little rock side to side. Then one of my favorite ways to end a yin po uh, practice is with seaweed. So seaweed, I take my legs up, have a softness through the joints of the knees and the ankles, arms up, softness in the wrists and the elbows, and just kind of float and hang out here. Maybe I'll have a little sway it's a nice alternate to a happy baby where I'm a little bit more yanking on my legs and being more active. I find this very chill, very kind of like embryonic, it's floating and fluid. It's a nice way to tie up your yin practice. You could be still or allow that just a fluctuation as if you're floating in water with your back body as the roots of the plant. Letting the face relax, back muscles soften. And when you're ready, slowly floating back down. And let the legs come out so that the blanket roll is right under your knees. So pull it in if it's a little too far away. And then your other blanket could be just a weight across your pelvis and your belly. Or if you want, you could open it up all the way, part way, Cover yourself. Let your arms come down at your side and simply melt into the ground. Let go of any holding in your tissues, any stuckness. Imagine that your energy your prana, or in this case, we talk about it in terms of our chi. Imagine that it was really flowing freely through your body without any stuckness. Releasing any feelings of pain, discomfort into the ground as if your tissues were just emptying out. Every exhale, let it go a little bit more. Breathing in through your nose and out through your nose with a soft exhalation. If your exhales were helping you to dissolve, let the exhales be a little bit drawn out. Imagining a nice warm sun on your body. So we have that sun for our liver. And the nice calming nature of the outdoors that helps calm those feelings of anger, frustration in our bodies. Our nature has a really cooling, calming effect on mind and our bodies. Far less stimulating than being in front of our screens. So be in this place of letting go. Drop into the ground, into the earth, into gravity. Let yourself be held by gravity.
coming up, I want you guys to stay for a few more minutes in your Shavasana. We're going to close very soon. Shavasana, you can just let this video play out and continue to rest. If you would like to start to finish with me, we're going to sit for a moment for a meditation practice. So take your time, deepen your breath, bring in small movements, or stay in your Shavasana. ready you're going to roll over to one side whichever feels more intuitive for you and you'll have a pause for a moment before you start to come up to sit and after you pause on your side for a few moments feel ready press through your arms bring your head up last I'll meet you in a seated position. Feel free to grab your pillows or blankets, whatever you need to sit up on. And you could also put those blankets underneath your knees if you need a little extra support. Close your eyes, sit up nice and tall, but do be relaxed through your shoulders and your face. We're gonna do a short practice of metta. Metta is where we wish peace and contentment to both ourselves, others, all beings. And it's a way of bringing that kind of sense of kindness and generosity, compassion. It's a softening, which can be helpful for balancing out the intensity of a liver gallbladder imbalance. So repeating in your mind, or out loud if you choose, your probably by yourself, so you're welcome to out loud. May you be free from fear and harm. And you might bring someone to mind, maybe a particular person that you care about. May you be free from fear and harm. May you be content. May you be at peace. May you be happy and free. And now, choosing someone who might be a little difficult, a little challenging in your life, someone that perhaps brings up some of those intense emotions. And may we wish them well as well. So may, may you be free from fear and harm. May you be content. May you be at peace. May you be happy and free. And let's direct those to ourselves. May I be free from fear and harm. It's so important in these times. May I be content. May I be at peace. And may I be happy and free. May all beings be free from fear and harm. May all beings be content. May all beings be at peace. May all beings be happy and free. Loka Samasta Sukino Baba 
Shanti. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free. Let's bring our hands together in front of the heart space. Nice inhale, and as you exhale, bow your head to your heart. Thank you for joining me for practice today. Namaste. All right, so we hope you had a good practice. Remember the stretch reflex. Whenever you're doing a yoga practice and you've gone too far, Remember that we're not serving ourselves by pushing. Right? Be gentle with yourself and hopefully you'll have better results. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much.